What's up everybody? This is LaRoz Stephan, DFS, or on FanDuel, uh, DraftKings, DraftPot, Fantasy Draft, whatever fantasy sites you play on, um, just LaRoz Stephan. I'm your host, and this is the inaugural word around the Chevy in the parking lot pre-fight workout. Um, today... Uh, we're going to be doing a little video. I'm not going to talk about the fights. If you want to know about the fights, uh, read the article. If you want in-depth analysis and breakdowns and play strategy and ways to fight and go, read the article below or in the link in this YouTube box um, on, over there on Roto Grinders. But this video here is about roster construction. Um, if you didn't know, the pricing model for uh, DraftKings contest in mixed martial arts has changed this week and weekend this Sunday morning and so you're going to need to change uh, your mindset because now DraftKings has uh, there used to be a different feel between the DraftKings contest and the counter move mixed martial arts contest now you know it's a whole it's a it's a different type of game now and i want to discuss that before i get into that though um i'm trying to start up a cartoon for my blog to expand my audience and take this thing to the next level make it somewhat profitable uh, uh with a with a kind of like tommy toehold so uh what i was looking for was if you uh, ever win some big money from a gpp or if you're just extraordinarily rich and you enjoy my work and I'm helping you and helping you be profitable in DFS, uh, donate uh, to this project. I'm running a go fund me on it. Um, I usually don't ask for anything back or, or anything from you, but if um, I help you out and uh, I help you win big money, donate to my project and help me get this cartoon in, off the ground. I need a new that laptop and, uh, and some, uh, to buy some cartoon slides to do the project. So go ahead and donate to my project. But uh, the link is below or the link is in my article. It's right at the top. I made sure I put it there. But uh, that's why I always post the donate things on my, my Twitter feed. It's because uh, it would take me a long time. I don't have any extra money on me to get the resources to do this project. I have the skills, but I have to get the new laptop hardware and I have to buy the... Um, the uh, puppet uh, drawings from a, a real professional because I can't draw. So that'll cost me a couple hundred dollars. So it should be some cash to help me raise money for it. I already, already raised $50. So I'm like a 16th of the way there. Chip in. But anyway, let's get into the video about roster construction. Um, what I wanted to talk about is that the algorithm for roster construction on a mixed martial arts contest has changed. Okay, it is totally unique now uh, from what it used to be. Uh, it used to be based off of um, Vegas, but now it's based off the counter move model. And the counter move model, it pays Vegas no respect. And when you look at um, the uh, prices this week, there are four Vegas favorites that are priced below $9,500. Usually, the cheapest that we could get a favorite would be at $9,900 uh, or $9,700. Or $9,800 in that $9,900 range. This week, we're getting favorites. As a matter of fact, one, two, three, I think four of the five people in between $9,000 and $9,500 are favorites. Okay? And they're favorites with big finishing potential. All right? So, what I wanted to get into was is that. You're going to have probably a lot of cash left on the table in, in, in your entries this week. Don't be alarmed. Okay, it's not a big deal if you've got an extra thousand, two thousand dollars left. Don't worry. You know, price, uh, the, the whole uh, salary cap thing isn't as big of an idea. It doesn't give you a, as good of an idea of how much uh, so called quote unquote quality that you're fitting in, into your rosters anymore it's no it's no longer a thing oh i've got you know two eleven thousand dollars fighters they're probably going to win their big Bay, vegas figures I, i'm not into vegas too much because they uh, i watch all the fights and do my research and so i think i've beat vegas you know but nonetheless vegas is right 60 percent of the time and in the old pricing model uh with the way they priced it sharply off vegas 
there is only a few underdogs or a few uh, guys in that $9,000 range who are really valuable sometimes. You would have to really search for value and really play to try and find that big upset or that big finish at the bottom of a card. That's no longer the case. Um, you could pretty much throw, like, price doesn't matter no more. Just try and get who you think is going to finish and score big points uh, in your rosters first and build around them no matter what their price is you know and then look at what you got and hedge it around that but i think that um your hedging strategies are not going to be so much cash specific they're going to be fight pace fight outcome weight limit like heavyweight if it's a heavyweight fight you might want to hedge those fights in your entries um you might want to hedge barn burners in your entries. It's not so much about trying to find cash to do things anymore. This is a different game now. Um, and you just don't want five wins anymore. In the past, since Vegas has a 60% success rate, if you could get five wins, you're probably going to do pretty well in the GPP. If you've got two finishes and five wins, you probably won. You know? Um... Maybe not two, but three finishes and five wins you probably won. On this new model, because I've seen it at counter move, you could definitely have five wins and, uh, and maybe not really win, you know? Because you might not have the best group of fighters put together. Uh, there's a lot of, uh, I think there's some pretty good bets to win at the top of this guard. Mayor Beck Tysumov. I don't know if he's, you know, I think he, uh, the, his opponent is going to give him a great challenge. But if you have a lot of those uh, underpriced guys, and let's say they win, and then you, you go for Mayor Beck instead of a cheaper guy that had more knockout potential, you could cost some, yourself some money. So throw Vegas out the window. And uh, if you can, watch the fights and, and, and use your intelligence because uh, it's not about buying up here anymore. It's not about, you know, let me get let me get these two big winners or two big favorites or, you know, let's do this like this and then build around that. No, uh, there is no when you look at your your salary cap, you're not going to be find any correlation between how much cash is left and the quality of your rosters. Like, you could build great rosters and just have, like I said, a grand and a half, two grand left maybe, if you pick all $9,000 fighters or something like that. So, and you could do that, and with what I'm looking at, you got a great chance to win. Now, discussing those four favorites that I, I was talking about, um, uh, I don't necessarily like Two of them to win. I don't like. I don't think Derek Lewis wins his fight. I don't. Why is that? You say because Derek Lewis has to get to the guard to finish. He usually, even though he's a uh, really powerful striker, he doesn't finish fights standing. Usually, he's got big power, but he hadn't developed his boxing game. Gabriel Gonzaga is a former title contender. He's got world class Brazilian jiu jitsu. I'm not telling you to fade. Uh, Derek Lewis, but he didn't want to be anywhere on the ground with Gabriel Gonzaga, and that's his best fight, uh, bet to finish. We've seen Derek Lewis get, I mean, the times that he has been gotten in trouble, it's been against Victor Pesta, taking him down to the ground. It was against um, Sean Jordan, took him down to the ground, pounded him out, or did he choke him out? I forget. I can't think of it, but he definitely finished him on the ground. If Gabriel Gonzaga gets Derek Lewis to the ground and there is at least three minutes left, this fight is over. Derek Lewis is not Crow Cop. Gabriel Gonzaga took Crow Cop down and mounted him. He's not, um, he's not, he, he doesn't have the ground game of any of the high level people that Derek Lewis has, uh, I mean, that uh, Gonzaga has faced in his career. Um, Gonzaga is a, 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 you know, he's faced Randy Couture. He head kicked Crow Cop. I, I just don't think there's anything for Derek Lewis to present for him to really uh, beat him this weekend. So if Derek Lewis does win, I think it's a late finish, which doesn't make him a must have. He's not a must have. I think he's a must play. But 
honestly, man, don't get too sucked into that one. Marcin Tabora, I don't like him. The fight pace, it, it should be a grind fest. And I don't think he has any knockout or submission uh, 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 upside against a better wrestler. Unless Tim Johnson makes a mistake and gets caught in a choke. Um, the two... Uh, underpriced favorites I like are Nick Dalby and Ian Entwistle. Ian Entwistle because if he wins, he's winning early and by heel hook. I don't think he has any other skills. He's either heel hook or bust. Heel hook early and bust. Or or nothing. Or, so uh, And uh, Nick Dalby. I think Nick Dalby is just about a sure thing to win. I think he's my favorite safest dog. But I think the best dog play, or not dog, but the sub $9,500 fighter to play is going to be uh, in Entwistle because of uh, his, uh, his, his finishing, his early finishing potential. I mean, in all of his professional fights, he's either been finished or finished in the first round. Like I said, heel hook or bust. So I don't know. I, Alejandro Perez, Perez is training at AKA. He has the training to avoid the heel hooks. But, I mean, he subbed Dan Hooker. Dan Hooker is pretty good. He sub, uh, He had the, oh, no. He didn't sub Dan Hooker. He almost subbed Dan Hooker. He got about this close. So, I mean, and he subbed Anthony Burchek. Anthony Burchek is pretty good. You know, so I'm almost thinking like he's going to get in deep on that heel hook. And it's just like a matter of, man, I don't even know. He's a master heel hook artist. So, yeah, any whistle is my favorite of those guys. Don't get too heavy in those guys or, or like get too aroused by the fact that they're all these underpriced favorites. Um, I would still construct my rosters according to the fights I think are going to finish the fighters I like. Uh, and I wouldn't. Like, get in too much of the stars and scrubs construction you see in other sports. Oh, he's priced really low. I, you know, don't get too much into that. Identify the value. Uh, this this pricing construction has opened up more value, more possibilities. I don't think you'll see as many ties as in the past. Um, yeah, yeah. Don't, don't get too caught up in it, though. Don't go and like you know roster too many of the value guys or anything if you don't think they're going to finish use the same thought process as you did in the past just know that now you need a more optimal lineup to win you're not going to be able to win with uh three wins and some combination of underpriced fighters you need the best possible finishes and, and, and wins and combination of fighters that you can get. So if you don't think a guy is finishing or whatever, or if you don't think he's a strong option, but he's got a big price tag, that doesn't mean you go after him. Because there's going to be a lot of guys with big price tags, like you've seen on Counter Move, and they're going to not do so well or not even be favorites sometimes. So, yeah, don't, don't, don't be guided. You can't lean on the price anymore because Vegas isn't driving it. Uh, the Vegas experts aren't behind it. The prices are driven by the counter move algorithm. However, they come up with pricing. I don't know. But, yeah, we got to get off that and we got to get a new mindset. Uh, 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 playing is no longer about, you know, riding uh, riding Vegas now. It's, it's more about riding your knowledge and uh, your research uh, because you're going to have to do it because you can't just look at prices and, and pick and choose like that. So uh, that's all I got for this inaugural version of the uh, the pre-fight workout. Or uh, I don't know I don't know if I do this like like this construction every week where I'll get off topic from the fights. But definitely this week I wanted to discuss that because it's a very big deal. And uh, I wanted you guys to think about that because it's it's going to be the difference between winning and losing. Oh. Uh, do do in cash. I forgot to say Nick Dalby. I think he's a great cash game play. Um, I think he's almost sure to win. He's got a great price, and you can build. It's so easy to build around him. So, um, yeah, that's uh, that's all I have for this week. Um, donate uh, if you uh, if I help you win something, give something back for this cause. You know, I usually don't ask for anything. Um, and um. I hope you uh, will tune into the uh, Hindsight is 2020 that I'm going to do after the card is over, uh, the video blog that I'm going to do. So uh, I hope you guys uh, stay blessed and uh, have a wonderful evening. Thanks for tuning in.